Hello and welcome to Shoreline Music Monthly. I think we put together a pretty good show for you tonight. Um, the cabinet, we are going to look at the history of the kazoo, which uh, is a lot of fun. And uh, we have a little special treat to close out the, uh, the show for you as well. Uh, we're surprisingly in, in some, I guess in some way, uh, just hit double digit shows. Um, this is number 10. Not, not sure I thought we were going to make it that far, but it's very cool that the, the amount of talent on the shoreline area and the way we've been embraced by it is, is fantastic. And uh, in a never ending line of amazing songwriters that uh, make their home on the shoreline, uh, I'm very happy to have with me tonight uh, John Martorelli joining me in the station. Good evening. And how are you on this fine evening, sir? Very good, very good. I'm glad we could uh, glad we could make this work because uh, me too. You're uh, you're pretty busy. Playing a lot, yeah. Now, I was getting a little confused. I see like there's a name. I mean, there's duos, there's trios, there's. You want to just I don't, maybe run me through? Sure. <laughs> the, uh, sure. Like <laughs> some of it is just a couple of the same guys, some not. Like for instance, uh, I'm playing with UHF. And sometimes the bass player will play with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is an offshoot. And then when we play electric, we get the drummer from UHF as well, and things like so that. So I saw the Jekyll and yeah. Hyde. I saw UHF, we, and because you know, in the in the social media virtual world of today, it's like you know, you become friends on social media, and it's like now I'm saying, wow, he, he gigs a lot. Yeah, like, what's this Jekyll and Hyde thing? Yeah. So yeah, so we started out doing like I don't know, I think it was about four or five years, about four years ago. And um, I was good friends with my, my buddy, Mike Cartwright, and uh, he was in another band called Smoke Bubbles, and uh, they were oh, starting I've, I've to... I've seen them, very good. Yeah, they're great. Anyway, uh, they were starting to break up, or playing less, or what have you, and um, him and I started doing the acoustic thing, and it took off, and it's fun, you know? And you get a lot more gigs, because it's not allowed, and cheaper to pay, you know, the whole bit. And yeah, the fun. owners the owners like cheaper on the occasion. The owners like cheaper and quieter <laughs> on most occasions, yeah. Nice. And then UHF is where you ratchet it up a little sure. other level. Yeah, more dancey, reggae, rock, funk, that sort of thing. But it's all really classic rock stuff I do, really. Okay, you know? so a lot of covers. A lot of covers, yeah. But, but you write a lot. I do write a lot, yeah. So a mixture of both. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get you to play some of the new stuff. Well, I don't know if it's it. new, but... Uh, it's Some of your own stuff tonight, right? Yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Now, do you do you mix that into your into your gigs? I do, normally? I do, but not enough. You know, not as much as I'd like to. You know, but uh, I'm looking forward to doing all of that tonight. You know, and you shall. You all shall right. indeed. Won't be the last time, but for her, I'm sure it'll be. 
okay But I could never break the heart of stone She never seems to need now anyone I know deep down she has such a beautiful soul She's so fine Um, now, a mutual friend mm -hmm. told me I have to ask about McEnroe. Okay. And I, I didn't know what he meant. Sure, but. sure, sure. I um, met him. I was playing in a band <clears throat> in New York in like '94. And um, well, this is a tennis player guy. Tennis player. Okay. Yep. Tennis legend, John yes. Mack. Okay. And uh, anyway, he was um, checking us out. He, the guy that I was playing with, played drums with him on the side. And he came and saw us uh, one night, and he was like, you want to come back to the house and jam? We went up and jammed, and I played bass. I'm, you know, I'm not really a bass player, per se, but I was like, yeah, sure, we'll have some fun. And then literally three days later, I'm in Italy with him, and we just started touring and touring, brought me wow. all around the world. And I started teaching him guitar, and we played, you know, and we've known each other ever since. We don't play as much anymore, but there was a good streak there in like the mid to the late 90s where we played like a lot of gigs, you know. Now we're lucky to get once a year. Nice. But we get together monthly, you know. Now, play. is he still playing just elsewhere? Or? No, he's just playing, just jamming. Yeah. You know, his gallery, we, he sets up a little spot in there, and he's got an art gallery, so we get on there and jam away. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Like a king, but when you scream. 
scream at me, oh, if I just don't know, think it's time for me to leave, I'm leaving, I get so confused, I, I just can't think straight, I'm so happy with the love, mama, I can't stand to lose you, is this love or hate, I don't Hello and welcome to Cabinet of Curiosities. On this episode, we're going to take a look at the kazoo. Uh, invented and uh, manufactured right here in the U.S. of A. Uh, American as apple pie, but most likely um, based on the merlitten, which was used for hundreds and hundreds of years uh, in Africa uh, as a voice disguiser. Uh, mainly in religious ceremonies, uh, as a, it's, a, it's a wind instrument, and it's, it's strange in that, as a wind instrument, there, it has no mechanical way, um, be it slides, valves, or sound holes to be covered, uh, to change the pitch. The, um, it's actually the player's voice, when they hum inside, there's a membrane that's stretched over the top opening, causes the membrane to vibrate, and uh, which then distorts and, in fact, amplifies the, uh, the player's voice. Um, if you blow into this, absolutely nothing will happen. But if you hum into it, you will get that um, amazing <laughs> kazoo tone. So the history of the American kazoo, or the modern kazoo, seems to begin in the 1840s with a gentleman named Alabama Vest. He came up with the idea, uh, drew up a design, uh, and needed some help in the manufacturing, so he enlisted the help of a, of a German clockmaker named Thaddeus von Clegg. Um, now they weren't called kazoos yet, they were made of metal, uh, membrane was a wax paper type material. Uh, near as we could tell, they, they may quite possibly have called the down, been called the Down South Submarine. Um, and there seems to be an indication that they were demonstrated at the 1952 Georgia State Fair. There is some question uh, as to whether any of this actually occurred. Now the first patent we have uh, for the kazoo was 1883, W.H. Frost, and he actually called it a kazoo. There's also a patent for a George C. Smith in 1902, um, also for a kazoo, which seemed to be the first to make it in pretty much the same type shape, the modern kazoo shape um, that we're familiar with today. Now let's not forget about Alabama Vest and all this. 
Um, at some point, he hooked up with a traveling salesman, uh, Emil Sorg, and a tool and die manufacturer uh, named Michael McIntyre. Together, they formed the original American Kazoo Company in 1916, and Mr. McIntyre uh, was able to patent the process in 1923. This made the uh, kazoos uh, much less costly to manufacture, making them more available and less expensive uh, for the masses. So they became quite popular after this. Um, the company continues on uh, in Eden, New York. I believe they curate a museum there as well. Um, still making metal kazoos. And uh, they, Alabama Vest seems to have disappeared at some point. Um, there's some question as to whether he existed at all, but that's, uh, that's the funny thing with history. Some things just get lost. Um, early on, uh, the jug bands adopted them in the 20s and 30s. Um, they also became quite popular with jazz uh, players, believe it or not. Um, as you can see in this, this very interesting clip right here. So as the age of plastics dawned, kazoos became even easier to make using injection molding techniques. And the membrane, which had most of the time been made out of wax paper uh, and really not very durable, would rip and shred and uh, was able to be upgraded to a plastic-like material as well so that they would last much longer. Uh, and this is what you have today. The uh, list of, of artists that have used the kazoo is, is quite impressive, from, from the Beatles in Lovely Rita, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Crosstown Traffic, many, many songs by Zappa, he seemed to be enamored with them. Uh, everyone from Pink Floyd uh, to Beck to Toby Keith uh, has used the kazoo, and at some point, he knew it was only a matter of time, somebody would go out and design a pickup um, specific to the kazoo, as if they did not sound distorted enough, it gives us the option of doing things like this. <laughs> the kazoo, an American original. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll find something else to talk about next time on the Cabinet of Curiosities. See you then. It seems you're recently a father. I am. Now, how does how does how does that change the the life it of a musician? It changes it a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you're up a lot earlier, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, she's everything to me. She's great. She's one. She's she's uh, one years old. Ava Gray is her name. Nice. And she's just an angel. You know? She spun me around full circle. I'm definitely a good boy now compared to what I used to be. <laughs> nah. But uh, no, nah, it's great. It's definitely different, though. You have a whole different mindset, you know? Does that influence your writing, you think, at yeah, all? Yeah. Or, yeah, it Absolutely, has. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot lighter and not so bummed out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I'm very happy for <laughs> yeah. you there. Yeah. That's great. <laughs>
It's always this or that, but I know where it's at, my baby. I'm longing to hold you, though we're not from the same school. I'm hanging on tight, child. I make you laugh, I make you dance, I make you my lover. You know, no, never know the feelings that we have for each other. I wake up to a brand new day, the sunshine. Stay. 
Michael Jones, I'll never know why. Never know why. Hear that just song. Well, thanks everyone for watching this month on Shoreline Music Monthly and in keeping with the theme of our Cabinet of Curiosities, uh, I've got a special treat for you today. For the first time ever, performing live, the Shoreline Music Monthly Kazoo All-Stars. All-Stars, tune up! <laughs>